So you've heard so many things, so many horror stories when it comes to living in a Florida 55 plus community. Well, if you have questions about what's involved and do I really want to get myself involved in one of these communities, if that's the case, this video is for you. My name is Ray Fernandez. I'm with Living in Palm Beach, Florida, powered by EXP Realty. Welcome. Each week, we discuss what it's like living here in Florida. If you're considering moving to Florida, this is a channel for you. The Florida is the home of the HOAs, or Homeowners Association. Uh, I just looked it up just to check on it. The uh, They say, if you go to ChatGPT, they say that there are 50% of Communities in Florida are HOA regulated, 50% 50, 50 of homes. Um, the truth is here in South Florida, we're based out of Palm Beach, Florida. We cover all of Florida, but we are based out of Palm Beach, Florida. If you live in South Florida, you will feel that it's a lot higher than that. I've always given people the given people the statistic in my, just based upon what I see, it's about 75 to 80%, 85% 80 HOAs. But here's the deal. If you are in a 55 plus community, that's sort of like an HOA, but on steroids. Stick around to the end. If you want to know, we're going to review some of the 55 communities we see a lot of people going to. Uh, there are there are a, a bunch of communities that we find more often than not than people are looking in this area of South Florida that consider going to. And we're going to cover them at the end of this video. So stick around for that. When you are in an HOA, they're basically you are re, you're governed by a set of rules. That's the way HOAs work. When you are in a 55 plus community, you have those rules and then you have additional layer of rules. These are all related to 55 plus people. Um, each community is a little bit different. Each 55 plus community is different. But here's the, here's the thing. Shh. They all sort of rhyme. <laughs> they all are very similar. Whether the 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 uh, the kids rule is 21, 19, 18, or whether it's uh, two weeks for visitors to stay or or whatnot, they all still are sort of similar. Uh, if you ever want I guess questions about a specific community, reach out. We'd love to help you. But that's what that they all sort of rhyme. And uh, if you are considering a 55 plus community, you have to sort of know what you're getting yourself into. So let me go over this thing. It's called the 80-20 rule. Uh, it's, it's a very popular rule among 55 plus communities. Essentially what it says at each 55 plus community, it needs to have in order to maintain that, that, that characteristic, they need to have 80% of their people, 80% of their homeowners, their residents uh, of 55 or older. One person needs to be 55 or older. Truth is, um, if even if you are looking at the 80-20 rule, they really do, they don't really let 25-year-olds buy a home in a 55-plus community. More on that later. Later, we're going to talk about the HOA police. Um, there really is no such thing as an HOA police, but um, there are, generally speaking, the rules are much more uh, enforced or more thoroughly enforced, in my opinion, from what I see, when it comes to 55 plus communities as opposed to regular HOA fees. If you don't like HOAs and 55 plus is not for you, uh, but let me review some of the pros and some of the cons when it comes to living in a 55 plus community. 18 years ago, my family and I relocated to this beautiful part of the world we call sunny South Florida, and we haven't looked back. Today, we truly find an honor to help people perhaps like you do the exact same thing. If you're thinking about moving to this area anywhere in Florida, and you have questions and you want to ask questions of people who've actually done it before, well, there's a few ways to get a hold of us. Down below is our email address. That's one great way. Also on the screen, you see our phone number. You can either call or text that number. But literally two of the best ways is in the description and in the comments section, there's a link. Click on that link. What that'll do is that'll have some time for us to speak, either through a phone call or through a Zoom, whatever way you feel most comfortable. In any case, we have your back when it comes to relocating here to sunny South Florida. Each community here, whether it's an HOA or a 55 plus, each set of community, each community has their own set of rules. Uh, when we moved down here 18 years ago, we, you know, from, from New York, we were, we were not really, we didn't really understand this. Um, but now, but now sort of we do. Uh, so if you're looking at a 55 plus community in particular, there's a whole nother set of rules that you need to sort of adhere to. Um, and there are differences in some of them. I'm going to give you right off the bat uh, one of the one of the, a difference that that can make. So, every, in the 55, I mentioned the 80-20 rule. 
You need to be one person needs to be 55 or older if they're at if they're not at that threshold. That goes without goes without saying. In general, they hold that rule because they want they don't want pe younger people per se. But if there's somebody who is, let's say, 53 and a half and they want to be in a 55 plus community and they know that it takes a year to build a house, they sometimes are a little bit lenient. In our area, as an example, there's one community in Avenir, one of the one of our most active communities here this year, that is dead set against. If you're not 55 or older, and I don't care if you're going to be when the home is built, you're not going to be allowed. And then the other big 55 plus community locally is in a town, a city called Westlake, Florida's fastest growing or newest and fastest growing city. Um, they uh, they have a more they have a 55 plus community there where they are significantly more lenient. Um, so that's why people reach use us, utilize us as a we do a lot of relocations, people moving even even from South Florida, south of us up here. So we help people understand the different rules between the different things. But those two communities, they're both very 55 plus in Palm Beach County. And they are very different. And we're going to review some of the differences you need to ask. You need to ask these questions before you move into any of these uh, communities. So if we're working with you, we'll help navigate you, navigate this for you. Um, we need to look at the, the docs. Uh, that's the doc documents for the uh, for for the fifty five plus. I you know I don't want any of you guys you know going forward with any of these people any of these communities without knowing what you're getting yourself involved with, involved with. It can be a huge mistake. Um, as an example, pets is 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 a, is, a, is something that is in lots of these docs documents. So I you know we have a uh, a person who has maybe more than two pets or has a bigger pet or has what they call aggressive breed, which is which is a some a term that a lot of the documents use down here. What is an aggressive breed? We'll help you with that. Um, but we do a lot of uh, new con we are a new home co broker right there. We are a we do a lot of new construction. I have I personally have a tremendous relationship with all the builders and I can get to the bottom as to what you know what they're thinking generally speaking when you're looking at new construction the homeowners association is still run by the builder it will eventually turn over but it gives them it gives them the basis of this documents to start before it turns over to the um, to the uh, to the communication and to the community and to the into the residents and that is the starting point that we need to consider when we're looking at as you know you and I collectively when we're looking at considering a, a 55 plus community or any community here in Florida so why do people choose Florida Florida is the number one uh, state when it comes to 55 plus communities in the entire nation why do people uh, choose Florida in that regard Let's go see what uh, what if you were just to Google that or Jet Chat GPT. Let's see what they say, and I'll review some of these points because I think they're all extremely important. So here are some of the points that are brought up here, and these are, and there's a couple of really good ones here actually. Um, so if you're thinking about moving here, why? Why do people? This is something you hear often. The climate is great. Um, it is a warmer climate. If you have arthritis, like I do, um, it is. I play softball. I do things to combat it, but. If you are looking at, if you want uh, a, a warmer climate, Florida is where a place for a lot of people choose. Um, so that's one of that's one of the benefits. And in, in Florida, in, in January and February here in South Florida, our typical uh, high is like a seventy five degrees. We don't get those bone chilling twenty degree days that you do up up north. So that's number one big benefit, tax benefit. Now it says here Florida is known for being uh, tax friendly, especially for retirees. No state income tax, no um, state tax, no inheritance tax. Inheritance tax. Those are really those are really important points. I'm going to touch on that in a minute. Uh, healthcare facilities. Uh, they have a, a we they have a Florida. We have a ton of there's hospitals all over the place. There are medical complexes all over the place. Um, it's very if you're in the healthcare field, this is a community you want to be in. Um, so there's a there's a lot when it comes to healthcare. Um, and one of and one of the pros when it comes to moving to be moving into a 55 plus community is the social and recreational opportunities. And I'm going to review that right now, along with the tax benefit aspect of it. The number one pro when it comes to moving into a 55 plus community is the lifestyle. And I'm going to go over some of that a little bit later. But that's really the the, one, the number one thing. Uh, 
There is a, uh, when you move into these communities, they have a schedule. They typically have a lifestyle director and there's just a lot more going. So if you're going on, so if you're retired and you just want to meet people and, and play pickleball and do all that, that is why people move to these kind of communities. They want to, it's a sense of community. It's a, that's the number one uh, thing I hear from people who are moving into 55 uh, plus communities is that it gives them a sense of community. Everybody's of the same age and around the same age or they're above 55. And so that's the number one uh, issue. One of them pros when it comes to uh, moving into a 55 plus community tax benefit. So there is no state income tax, there's no inheritance tax. There's none of that nonsense. So uh, we, um, it's a very lean uh, uh, tax structure here. The main way people get taxes here, the main way the state collects taxes is through real estate taxes. So one of the things, issues I often come, come you know, contend with is when people ask me, well, because they think that Florida is like real estate taxes are going to be really super low, and they're just not. Um, moving from New York to here to Florida um, 18 years ago now, um, I sort of, my, my real estate taxes were lower. They were not as low as I thought. And that's something, that's the feedback we often get from people. I thought it would be lower. Um, it, it's not. It's it's a little bit lower. Reach out to our team. I would love to help you and explain that because I know that's a question that comes up all the time. But there's other other features that, that are very strong when it comes to this. Again, no state income tax, no state income tax is that awesome. So if you have social security, you're not, you know, you, you're that income is not being taxed on the state level. Uh, if you have a business, that's there's no state income tax on that. Very powerful. There's also the homestead exemption. Homestead exemption is an extreme, extremely powerful. It needs to be a primary resident, by the way. If you want to know what's involved with that, we can help you with that. But um, the um, it, 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 it's a, it's powerful from it limits the how much you can as a save our homes provision in the homestead exemption rule. rule. It it um prevents them from raising the assessed value of your home more than 3% any given year. Super powerful if you've been here for a while. There are people like myself who've been here 18 years. My home is assessed significantly below its market value. Um, so I'm taxed less than more. It also gives you a uh, uh, protection from, from creditors. It also gives you protect. It also uh, uh, it gives you um, an, an exemption of $50,000 to uh, to take off your assessed value for tax purposes. Again, these are there's a lot to this, and I can't make this video about this, but if you have questions about the tax benefits when it comes to being in a 55 plus and or moving to Florida, we'd love to help. All right, let's review some of the rules that are going to drive you crazy. So one of the cons when it comes to moving to a 55 plus community. So You've got the 55 plus thing, right? One person needs to be 55 plus. They, they don't they keep that 80 20 rule not because they want to let in 30 year olds or 20 year olds or whatever. They don't do that. They keep it there to give them a little bit of latitude, a little bit of leniency when it comes to um when it comes to allowing people in. Like as an example, if you're if you're 54 years old and it takes a year to build your house, they want to be able to go into contract and allow you in. Um, if you're at your capacity and you can't ac accept anything more than that 20% in under 55, then you're sort of out of luck in that regard. But that's sort of how that works. The big issue here, here's some of the biggest, biggest issues evil have is kids. Um, if you have an older kid, uh, let's say, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, um, you want to, you want to, you know, you might not be able to move in. Um, to a community, um, like let's say, like like myself, I had I had I had I have children now. When we were older, if you fit that category and you uh, you're not you you will not be able to to live there. Um, communities are either in general they're either they're either 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Those every community is a little bit different. A lot of them are eighteen. A lot of them are twenty one. So if you have a um, if you have a 17-year-old child and you're 55, they won't let you in there because if he's going to live there full time. So that's a that's a that's an extreme factor. If you're 22 and older, generally speaking, that's fine. Um, there's also rules about when they could use the facility, which which will drive you crazy. And let me say this too: I've got to re I'll repeat this more than once. I'm sure. Don't think you're going to bend the rules because they have the HOA police there. <laughs> they have people. That will really give you a hard time 
um, with this. I'm just hate to say it, but there are people that have nothing better to do, <laughs> and except to complain, people they're they're in retirement and they they I mean, not to, not to sound horrible about it, but that they they have more time on their hands and they and they and they're proud of their community too, which I can appreciate. But they will not allow you to uh, overstay visitation. Let me talk about visitation in a second. But if you have a child that's uh, let's say let's say seventeen and the rules eight and the rules eighteen, they're likely going to tell on you if that's you. So don't think you're going to bend the rules. So if you're grandparents, right? If you have if you have children, if you have children, have children, and uh, they want to come for the uh, for Christmas break, spring break, you're fine. So that's one of the pros. When it comes to living in a 55 plus community, you're fine. <laughs> um, they don't, they, they're not, you know, they don't come down on you for that. But um, you look at the rules as to how long visitors can stay. Because if it's, um, if they're there the entire summer, your, your grandkids, that might be an issue. Sometimes it's two weeks. Sometimes it's a month. But if that's important to you, if you have, if you're going to have your kids, your grandkids over, and they're let's say less than 17 years old, and they're going to, and you think they're going to have them there from the month of June, July, and August, think twice about that. Look at the rules. Um, they oftentimes they have regulations on the um, the stay that you can have. Um, I see it often that they're two weeks. I see it often that they're a month. Um, but you want to make sure that you're comfortable. You're you, you're comfortable with the rule. Because again, they generally speaking are not going to let you bend the rules. Don't expect to come there and bend the rules. Um, but that's a factor that I find often people have a, a, have issue with. If you're watching this and you live in a 55 plus community, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what your experience is. What are your pros? What are your cons? Um, what do you find? Give advice to the people watching here. What do you think is important when it comes to uh, good or bad, when it comes to living in a 55 plus community? Here's another rule I think that can be a little bit of uh, of an issue. Uh, it can be. I know it's an issue. Um, we have in Florida a lot of snowbirds. I get a lot of people. We reach, we speak to people like you thinking about moving down here literally every day, and um, and we and so I know what what some of the some one of the what some of the contentions are. A lot of you guys are snowbirds, which is cool. Um, which is um, it often starts that way. We see a lot of people that move down here first with a with Florida as a secondary home. They can't take advantage of homestead on that in that regard. I can reach out if we want to know more about that. Uh, but they eventually become primary residents of Florida, and uh, so there there are some there are some rules. So when you're a snowbird and let's say you're away for the summertime, and you want to let's say have your children live here. For, for for the duration why not they they uh they're gonna they want to live in florida and you're up in uh, massachusetts or chicago wherever and you want to let your children uh live live here and they might be 21 years old um for the for the summertime there are often rules against that so you want to know what the visitation lies don't think that they're going to be able to live in your home for an extended period of time because they're related and even if they're above their threshold when it comes to age for children Here's a rule that's going to be a killer for some people, especially for older kids. Um, so some some communities have these supervision rules, um, which is which is tough. Um, supervision rules mean that if you're going to go to the pool, as an example, they kids are not allowed between. Uh, I'm just making these rules up, but this can be an example of a rule uh, between ten and two, no children. Um, and and now if you have your Unless they're supervised. Now, if you're on, let's say, spring break and you have they're on spring break and they're 17 years old and that's below your your age threshold, um, it's a little silly that they can't use the pool unsupervised. A 17 year old who knows how to swim in, in the pool, especially if they're only there for a week. So you got to look at got to look at that kind of stuff. So that is a rule that if if I were living in it, I don't live in a fifty five plus myself personally. Go, I'm of age, um, you know. And that's another thing. You don't just because just because you're of age doesn't mean that uh, everyone wants this, these kind of rules. But let me get back to my point: is that um, that could drive people crazy, and often does. Um, cause they can take these rules. These, they will often point to these document, the documents, the HOA rules when it comes to this. So that's one of the cons when it comes to 55 plus communities, they sometimes have supervision rules that are sort of ridiculous. Having said that, that can be a pro for you. 
I get a lot of people that will tell me, I just had one last week that said to me, I just don't want to see kids you know, swimming in my pool. I mean, that's that, that really is up to you. The number one reason people move into 55 plus is for lifestyle. And sometimes they just want to be amongst people who are just 55 and plus. So that's one of the pros when it comes to 55 plus communities. One of the other pros when it comes to a 55 plus community is you have a lifestyle director. Um, that's really, this is the nuts and bolts of why people move to 55 plus communities. They have someone often play, paid through, and we're going to go over the cost of all this stuff. So I haven't mentioned that. It's an important point. So stick around. We're going to review the cost of the, uh, of, of some of this stuff. But, um, one, one of the pros is that you get a lifestyle director and they have, it's someone that the HOA hires specifically to take care of you in terms of your activity when we're looking at new construction, uh, 55 plus communities, we often go into the clubhouse and they give us like a like a um, a calendar of events. And some some are better than others, um, but generally speaking, 55 plus have a calendar of events that are quite a, quite elaborate, and um, and that's what they do. They're meant to they're, they're meant to basically. I use this term all the time. They're meant to help you feel as if you're living life uh, as every day is a Saturday, seven Saturdays a week. Um, they have events like concerts. They have clubs. That's the other thing. They have a lot of clubs. And if there's if the club that you want is not there, you can start one on your own. In the bigger communities like a Riverland in uh, Port St. Lucie, we'll talk about that. I gave away one of the communities I'm going to cover. Um, one of the most elaborate uh, 55 plus communities here in South Florida. And it's got amazing uh, amenities. If you're in a big 55 plus community, there will be a club for practically everything. And if there's not, you can, you can start one. But one of the pros when it comes to these 55 plus is that there is a, an enormous amount of activities of things that you can do. The clubhouse, the amenities, everything that these communities offer in general are elaborate, especially the ones today. Um, they get better and better. There's a builder nearby that uh, that keeps building these Valencias. We'll talk about that later. And every time they open a new Valencia, the the amenities get more and more elaborate. Here's some of the things you might be able to. You will be able to get in some of them for sure, but you might you know think to expect um, resort style pool. Another thing that's very common now is resistant pool, resistance pool. That's where you walk against the current. It's great exercise. Uh, lap pools, they have that. Um, the rage now is pickleball. Everyone loves pickleball, it seems. Um, there are some really super competitive leagues down here. Um, so if you're into pickleball, there is not a better place <laughs> than a 55 plus community in Florida. They have uh, they have one up in Port St. Lucie where they have uh, people from all over the state come here and they have a massive um, competition. Um, and they, and it's, it's like a tournament. And so that those, those are some of the things that you could do. So they have, they, they, they have a lot of these communities now are building indoor pickle, uh, pickleball. There's a new sport called Patel, which I didn't know about till recently. One of the communities down here, it's not a 55 plus, but one of them I saw the first one I've seen have it. It's, uh, down in Boca Raton, Florida. They have a Patel court, which is like a sort of like a squash. It's like, a, it's like in between pickleball and squash. They have they have like glass walls around. So they're getting creative with the amount of sports you can have here. Uh, tennis, of course, is extremely popular. So you have tennis, Patel, pickleball. Um, those are just some of the things. One of the other really important points, and you want to ask about this, is do they have a restaurant on premises? Whether that's important to you or not, it's important to a lot of people, a restaurant on the on the at on the clubhouse. Um, so I would ask the question because it would I I feel it makes it more marketable um to buyers in the future because eventually you might look to sell the house five years later, whenever it might be, or or whenever. Um, but um a lot of the 55 plus do have restaurants on on site. Uh in general, people, if you're 55 plus, there's a couple of characteristics. Um, first off, there are smaller homes in general. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Smaller homes in general. And the, and you want to have everything there. You don't want to be having to travel five miles to go to a Publix or, or to go to a restaurant. So they do put these places in an area where there's a lot going on, aka Avenir and Westlake. Those are two big communities that we work down here in South Florida. 
uh, that we see a lot of people moving, whether it's 55 or all ages. Um, so they have like a self-sustained area with a ton of restaurants um, in the area uh, and, and, thing, and, things, and things to do. And it helps to have a restaurant on premises. It just makes it convenient. Why, you know, take your golf cart. So that's what they want to say. These, a lot of these places are golf cart friendly. Um, so you can take your golf cart from your house. People love this. And this is something that's been really popular in recent years. People can take their, their golf cart from their house to the restaurant. <laughs> I mean, it's real easy. Uh, Avenir, this happens a lot. Westlake, it happens a lot. Um, you can, it's, it's one of the things that, that's much more popular. So again, if you're looking at a 55 plus community, ask to see if they have a restaurant and go, and you know what, visit it. Um, I'll talk more about a stay and play uh, program. A lot of these, the, the more popular 55 plus communities where you can actually try staying on the community for a couple of days, um, for, for a very you know low cost and look at it. We'll talk more about that later. Let's review the pet stuff. All right. So if you're a dog lover or cat lover or all that, you need to know about this stuff. Um, every rule, every community is different, but a common common rules are a number of pets. Um, oftentimes it's two. Uh, no, uh, common rules are the weight of the pets. Um, oftentimes it's 50 pounds. I've seen that a lot. I've seen it more. I've seen it less. Um, and then aggressive breeds is really a popular term to use. And what does that mean? Um, everyone's definition of aggressive breed is different. And are they a full bred or whatever? There's lots of ways possibly around these rules, but um, I've had, I've had, uh, you know, I have my team look at each community and I will find, I'll have them look at to see what their rules are. Um, but um, so go, aggressive breeds can mean pit bulls, Doberman pinchers, Rottweilers, any of those, um, you know, any of those, any of those guard dog type 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 dogs, German Shepherd, arguably, I don't know. Um, but each community, if if you own these kind these kinds of breeds, um, you need to reach out to us. We'll help you with this regard. But these are things you need to consider. Um, so there are lots of pet restrictions in HOAs as a whole, and it's even more so the case with fifty five plus because you have it's you seem to have more eyes watching you when you live in a fifty five plus community. Let's review the cost. Um, this is an important point. Everyone asks. Generally speaking, a 55 plus community is going to cost you more money. And I have one community in particular, one city in particular, that is a good example of how to uh, elaborate this point. It is a lower cost community as a whole when it comes to HOA fees. Uh, the city is Westlake. Uh, Westlake has, uh, it's a city of, a when it's all said and done, going to be about 4,000 homes. Within that city, there's about 900 homes that are in a have that are 55 plus in the community of Crestwind, Builders Coulter, really good builder, and um, and they're more than 50 percent sold out now. We've done a lot of business in there. Um, anyways, the HOA fee for Westlake as a whole, and this is a community that is very uh, HOA conscious. I find people who buy, who want to you know limit the amount of money they pay for an HOA, they move to cities like Westlake. Um, in an all age community in, in Westlake, it costs about $150 per month. In that same city, uh, Crestwind is a 55 plus community. Your HOA fee, and these are rough numbers, uh, is about $350 a month. So you're looking at a premium of about $200 to be in that 55 plus community versus an all age. And that's pretty typical. And the truth is, um, Crestwind has one of the lowest. Uh, 55 plus communities that we see in new construction here in, in South Florida and probably anywhere in Florida, really. But listen, if you want to move to other parts of Florida and you have questions, we have people on the ground living in Palm Beach, Florida, that can help you on the West Coast of Florida, Northern Florida. So don't limit yourself to reach out to us whether you want looking at South Florida. We'd love to help you in this regard. We know this stuff really well and we know the builders really well. But having said that, um, that gives you an idea that what the, the Westlake is a good uh, example of the differential, but the HOA fee in general is higher than that. A lot of them are like $500. If you look at one of the most popular and one of the most elaborate um, HOAs in the uh, 55 plus communities is called Valencia Grand here, which is, you know, the grandest of the Valencias down here in, in Palm Beach County. Um, their HOA is about $700. And that happens a lot. Up in, if you go a little bit north, and I'm going to go into the communities in a minute now. I'm at that point where we're going to start touching on some of these. Uh, if you go north, 
to where a lot of people are looking today, uh, Port St. Lucie, and they do it because there's a cost benefit there. That's prices in general are a little bit lower. If you if you go up there, your HOA is going to be lower than that seven hundred dollars. You can probably get a really good HOA around four or five hundred dollars when it comes to um, your fifty five plus communities, and the price of homes are a little bit less money up there to boot. Some of these fifty five plus communities are quite large and elaborate. Um, up in Port St. Lucie, I'm going to one of the communities right now. Uh, three of them actually. There's there's a few of them up there that I really really like. Um, Riverland is the largest. Riverland is made up of about you know soon to, when they're done, who knows how many, but four soon to be five uh, bigger uh, you know subsection of communities. But it's in Port St. Lucie West. They have um, they have an elaborate paseo they call it. And it's a way to get in between the communities. I talk about golf cart friendly. This is the most friendliest golf cart community. It's not a golf community. Um, and you can travel between the different communities. So this is common in 55 plus to be able to have this. You want to be able to take your golf cart and go to the grocery store and not have to get in your car. That's something that today and today that people find and appreciate. Um, so Riverland has that. They have Valencia walk valencia park is where they're selling right now the builder there is geo homes and uh so they they when you see a valencia that's like a code word for the valent uh for, for geo homes they do a lot of valencias there's probably about 15 or 16 of them now um up in up in port st lucie that's what they have there we have two other communities that we take a lot of people if you're looking at port st lucie for a 55 plus there's Del Webb Tradition, which is close to being sold out, probably about 80% sold now. And there's also Tolera, which is a phenomenal company, uh, uh, community, 55 plus community. Um, different personalities. And I got to say this. Each of these communities have different personalities. Once we get to know you, we can sort of get a fit. Uh, get an idea as to what might be a fit. And we'll, we'll say, you got to go here, but we'll say, listen, based upon what you're telling me, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I would look at Talar, I would look at Riverland, I would look at Valencia Grand. Um, so we have a sense as to what the type of people that live in these things, live in these communities. So in any event, that's one of, the, one of the reasons why people use us. And we do a lot of business and we are a new home co-broker, as I mentioned. Um, and now I'll tell, give you another reason why people use us in that regard. Don't ever walk into a sales center on your own in a new construction community. That is a huge mistake. Um, 55 plus or, or any all age, doesn't matter. Um, I, we really, I truly recommend hot, uh, independent representation. In many cases, that means that we need to be there on your first visit. Otherwise, the builders will not allow us to represent you at that point. There is no cost out of your pocket to utilize someone like us as your realtor um, when it comes to representing you at these uh, new construction communities. Uh, they, but they do require us to be to make the introduction. We'll be there for the whole, um, whole your whole journey. I have a transaction coordinating team that is aces. I mean, they 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 help keep the builder accountable. We'll make sure that the that everything is you know document wise is in order, um, and we'll we'll help help you um, find you know. The, the, Go through the process and so forth. And the other thing I got to say is there's no discount for not using us. Sometimes people think they're going to go, if they go direct, they get a better price. You don't. In fact, you probably get a better price by using us because we will let you know what else is out there. It's one of the big reasons. Um, if there's a, an existing home in that community, and lots of times there are, that that is a better value or better fit for you, we'll tell you. They won't. The builder won't tell you because they want you to spy their, their community. Um, if, if there's a, another community that's a better fit, they're not going to tell you. We will. Um, we work with all the builders. We know the positive and negative attributes of all these communities. Do you know what a CDD is? If you're looking at new construction, you need to know what a CDD is. Reach out if you don't know. I mean, it's very important. Not all communities have CDDs. Some have high, significantly higher CDDs. So these are things that they might not necessarily tell you. In any event, don't walk into that. I'm not going to say elaborate any more than that. Um, we would love to help you in your journey when it comes to looking at buying a home here in Florida. Continuing with a couple of the communities that have the very golf cart friendly. I mentioned Riverland, Tolaro. You can take it. Uh, it's near a place called Tradition in Port St. Lucie. You can take it. You can take your golf cart right into the Tradition Village, which is a really elaborate shopping area. Um, 
In Westlake, you have Crestwind, I mentioned. You can, Crestwind of Westlake is building an elaborate town center. Hasn't really started yet, but they will soon. Um, in Avenir, our number one area this year, um, in terms of all overall um, activity, they have a 55 plus community called Regencies. It, Regency, it's a Toll Brothers community. And um, this is a, a literally a haven for golfers. In your clubhouse, they have a golf simulator, which is amazing. Um, uh, I think it's, it's really nice. It's next to um, a Jack Nicholas um, signature course called Panther National with high-end homes in there. It's a membership community. Also adjacent to, to Regency and, and Avenir is the Sand Hill Golf, uh, Sand Hill Terrain Golf Public Course. Um, so... Again, you know, you can take your golf cart right to the, uh, right to the, you can go to your house in the golf cart and go right to the course. How does that sound? I mean, if you're a golfer, that, that, that's amazing. Um, they have an elaborate town center there too. So you can take your, the Publix is in the, they're in the process of building it. The, um, the uh, Publix is, the walls are up and everything else is starting to go in there. When people find out more, about this community, prices will go up in this community. I feel very strongly about saying that. Um, you know, a lot of people even here in our office is about, you know, half hour south of that, 25 minutes south of there. And a lot of people here don't know about Avenir. So anyways, I feel comfortable in, in saying that there's a, there's a, um, there's that, there's that, let me finish the point is that there's an elaborate town center. And that's what a lot of 50s, 55 plus communities do. Valencia Grand is a little bit more money. You're looking at a million and a half dollars to, to get in there. Almost sold out there. But again, golf cart, golf cart friendly within there. Um, but there are lots of communities like this. And we would love to help show you. Um, we have a new, new construction website. Reach out to our team. Email me. I'll send it to you. It'll be a good platform for you to look at just going into the to searching some of the new construction communities. And it's a great way to discover what's available here when it comes to 55 or any new construction communities here in Florida. A couple of points I need to point out here um, as a 55 overall. Um, when you go for resale, let's face it, it's a big asset. I mentioned the smaller homes and whatnot. That's a that's an attribute of 55 plus. But when you go to resale, which you might end up doing at some point, five years, 10 years, whenever, um, there's a limited um, audience for resale. You got to keep that in mind. Your audience is people who are 55 and up, 55 and up. So um bear that in mind. And that can have that can have a that can have an impact. So reach out to us. We want to explain a little bit more about that. You want to know how they how they how do they enforce all this stuff, right? They have um and people who don't live in you know in nature way communities or in outside of Florida might not understand this as well. So I I'm here to explain a little bit some of the basic basis basis of how this works is that if they find you're breaking rules or any of these regulations they deem um that is a, a, a viol a viol they call it a violation. That's what I was gonna say. They call it a violation. You get a violation letter and they, they could potentially fine you and add it to your HOA. They could potentially put a lien on your house. So you got to be careful with, with some of this stuff. There's a, a lot going on when it comes to buying a 55 plus community. So what is one of the best ways to, fig to figure out whether this is for you? I have a, I have a little bit of a secret here um, that you can sort of look at these things on a no risk basis and to get a sense whether it fits. There's a builder here down here that we work very closely with who have it in a couple of communities. It's called the Stay and Play Program. The Stay and Play Program gives you the opportunity to look at these to look at um, the community, to live, literally live in the community for a couple of nights. Um, the, they will charge you like a roughly, you know, don't quote me exact on this, but it's roughly a hundred dollars for the stay. Um, and you can live in one of their models that they're building for a couple of nights and live in the community, go to lunch in the, uh, in their clubhouse restaurant and stuff like that. It gives you a sense as whether this is going to be a fit. Look at the elaborate amenities they have. It's called the stay and play program. And I get people that come down here and they will stay. I meet you. I need to meet you when you, when you go there, you know, to do, they'll do like a presentation. I mean, some I mean, people could come, can compare it to like a timeshare presentation, but um, you're there for like, you know, they'll take you and it's, it's enjoyable, actually, because I've sat through so many of these. Um, they'll go through what the amenities and what you can expect if you were to live there. And they'll take you as to some of the places you're going to want to experience while you're there. But you're there for a few nights and you're living in one of their model homes. And it's one of the best ways to decide whether this community or 55 plus in general is the right fit for you.
we are often asked this from people and we can't legally answer the question. <laughs> um, what is the average age in this community? And I, we're just not, as realtors, we are held to the standard. We're not allowed to talk about age, race, and all this kind of stuff. And we can't directly answer that question. Uh, but in, in general, there are some characteristics between the different 55 plus communities that make it unique. As an example, um, the, eight, the 55 plus communities that have been around since the 80s, 90s, and whatnot might have a different age demographic than the, than the newer ones. Um, you know, and that's just the, the way it works. Obviously, they all need to be 55, but there are some that maybe trend a little bit older based upon the age of when the community was built. Um, reach out to our team if you want to know a little bit more about that. But that's that's a question we get off we get asked often, and each community is different. Um, what makes them all collectively the same? I feel, and what the biggest pro when it comes to moving to a 55 plus community is, it gives you a sense of of community, and that the people who are looking at 55 plus communities and truly enjoy it, that is the biggest pro, and one of the reasons why people consider 55 plus community is a sense of community living here in Florida. 55 plus communities are not for everyone. Florida is not for everyone. Let us help you decide whether that's the case. Palm Beach, South Florida, paradise here in Florida.